got direction. So I can get started on this video. Alrighty, I'm going to go through and I'm going to get out all the blocks that are eight and a half by eight and a half. And if they're not, I'm going to trim them down to where I can. This is that new uh, board that I got. I want to try it out. I, I, but I'm going to get the uh, turning one now that I tried that out. It feels weird to use that one. <laughs> it's smaller than this one. So I think this one here would be a lot better to use. We're doing good. Just gotta check each one of them, make sure they're yeah. that they're all the same. We got to we got to oh so here's the lacking. Alright. This one's lacking a little bit.
I was completely out. Didn't even know I was even in the world. That's how out I was. Alrighty. So what I want to do is when I iron all these are here down. These are here already down. We're good to go on this one. So I don't know how many I'm going to need, but as you can tell, I got plenty of them out here. Can't go without. So, let me find my little bitty square here. I'm going to want it. I'm not prepared. I should have. There it is. I want to want two inches out of these. So, not out of these. I want these to be strips. So, hopefully, some of them are big enough. Way to find out. Line it up there. Oh, yeah, we can handle that. And how about that? What is this? Ooh, look at there. Look at there. So, what is this one? It looks like four inches. And that looks fine to me. I can handle that. Wonder how many we could get. <coughs> that wanna be obsolete. This right here is six and a half. I think those nope, those ain't gonna work. Alright, we'll make us a pile. Alright. So here's one but Two great big old long ones here. How about those? If those work on it, if I trim them down, what is this one? Three. So that right there is. See what we have here. Nope. Nope. Right here is a three. Too small. Too small. So, try to keep them all together. This is one piece. It should be a three, too. Yep, that's a three. So I figured I'd just go ahead and use these pieces up and all on this quilt and if I if I got enough I'll do the next and you know may I maybe I'll do it a different way. I don't know. But I know one thing. That's a good way to use these pieces up. Give it one give it a, a theme behind it. And this one's a two and a half. That's not gonna work. <coughs> well, am I going to hire? They have different, different measurements. Find something down through here. Okay, here's some more. Yeah, I know those. These right here, they're all um, where I cut them off the sides of my quilt. So if I go and I try to get three inches out of all of them, yeah, maybe I need to go down. Two. Where's my? All right. What I do with it? Yeah, I ought to go down to this size. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. What is that? A two and a half. Do two and a half. Two 
think that would probably be my best bet. Two and a half. Then that way. Get rid of that niche that's in there. Ha uh ha. -huh. I gotta work on that quilt. I got mean, rug. Okay. <coughs> Let's chop down one of these. Let's see how we're gonna like all this. Yep, 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 yep. Let's grab this Let's see. Where is there it is? I think that might work better. Lordy, I feel like I need to go back to sleep. I don't want to lose that. There we go. We're good. Um. Now just because I'm putting this like this doesn't mean that's the way we're going to keep it. In other words, we're going to add more to it. What if these are here smaller? Well, one way to find out. Keep them bigger ones for the yeah. Look at that. That's so much smaller. All right, let's see what we got here. If I can get like these right here, would be so much better because they have the different colors in there. See if I can't find a couple more like that. 
today. I'm just going to go ahead and iron them. Get the ones we want. See this now here's the same color as those. So I'll stick that one up there. And my eyeball. It start itching like crazy. So if we can't iron them and separate them. And see what we got. And then that way, then we know. Wait a second. Don't want to go there. But this is what I was thinking. So I think I'm going to get off of here now. I'm going to work on this and get things cut down. We're getting a lot of these, which that's good. At least for right now. And get these ironed. <laughs> and get me some strips cut but those right here strips but you can see what I'm after here so let's see ooh let's try this out this right here probably neat as all get out look at that put, little, put these right here in there like that let you uh oh uh oh I'm out of that one so if we can't find another one. There we go. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. It would be cool if I could take and like this one. Find the strip for it. Bring it down like that. That would be neat. That would be neat. <coughs> I like that idea. We will see as we go. But for now, all I'm going to do is iron these and see what goes on from there. Got mom over there working. And I iron. don't work. No, she don't. <laughs> no, she I don't. create. She don't work at all. But I figured I would, I'd let her iron and I would cut strips. And then that way we could get this right here pretty well much done, hopefully. Maybe she'll get into talking to us. What do you want me to talk? Well, yeah, talk. They like it when you tell stories and all. I pretty much have a captive audience, then, don't I? Yes, you do. Okay. They love you, Mom. I've mentioned a number of times about Mother and I going down and spending <coughs> parts of the, each summer with my aunt, Mother's younger sister and her husband in Riverview, Florida, south of Tampa. Well, I'd been hearing all these years about this family of four skunks that live about seven miles on up towards Tampa from my aunt and uncle's place. And they've been, they'd been telling me you go up there, and, and they have a skunk crossing. And you park before the skunk crossing. 
and get out of your vehicle and go stand beside the road and the skunks will come down so so close to the road and and the male the leader he'll get down there and he'll dance for you oh he just sh puts on quite a show and he does he did I don't know whether they're still there or not but he'd go down there and he'd just press it back and forth and show that tail stripe and it was it was quite entertaining if you like animals at all well one day he said he said this morning the skunks were out and he said I drove by and said there was a lot of people standing there taking pictures of them you want to get in the car now and go up that way and see if they're still out? I said, sure. I'll take some pictures of the skunks. So I took my camera, and we got in the car, and we drove up there, and we stopped at the skunk crossing. And I went over and stood by the fence. It was just uh, one of those wire fences that have the little twisted wire knobs on it to keep cattle from breaking through the fence and I, <coughs> and I saw the one little skunk come out and he just dancing up and down shaking that little tail and my uncle kept referring to him as a him and so I did too I just figured it was a him I don't know how he knew I just figured you know, he, the male's usually the more aggressive and showy of, of the animal kingdom. So, he said him, so I said him. So, I took some pictures. And Uncle Charles said, Pat, you took the pictures too soon. I said, how do you know? He said, because... There's two more of the skunks over there waiting for you, you to take their picture. And you did, you took the pictures too soon. They're not out there. And they're waiting way back over there for you. So I aimed the camera over that way and took some more pictures. Didn't see much of anything, but he said they were there, so I aimed the camera and took pictures. Well, when I got my film developed, Charles took the first one that came out, and he said, you see right here? He said, I told you you took the picture too soon. He said, here's the one that you, you took the picture of. He's out here dancing, and here's two more of them standing back here waiting for you to take their picture. And they're back too far. You can't get them in it. Well, sure enough. When he showed me the picture, you can see looks like two little tufts of extra dark grass further back in the in the frame. But he said it was the, it was the, two of the other skunks. But I never never did see the fourth one. But it it was enough, you know. It was a little adventure. We had some fruit with us, and we threw fruit over in the yard. That's what everybody did was skunks love fruit, especially real ripe fruit. And we had taken some overripe oranges and grapefruit and stuff, and we had some grapes that had gotten too ripe. We threw them over in there. And everybody else got in their cars and started leaving. We did too. I said, I never did see all four of the skunks. He said, well, they came out there. And the other people took pictures of them. But you took your pictures too soon. I said, well, I don't guess I'll get to do it then. So, I was satisfied. You know, I had had a chance. <coughs> and now I still have my pictures 
where I have the one skunk dancing out in the front and two that you can't tell what it is it just looks like two real dark tufts of grass for the back <coughs> And my cousin informed me tonight. I, I sent her the picture over the over the internet, and she enlarged it. And she said, "Well, Pat, he she said I can tell you one thing. That is a boy dancing. Uncle Charles was right. That's a boy dancing." I said, "You can see him prancing up on his little toe." And you can see it's a boy. I said, okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> and there's a place not too far from where they were live where there's all kind of animals. Zebras and buffaloes and ibex. And I thought I was the one that bloated up. Well, Carolyn told me that you could see that it was a boy. You did blow it up some. Yeah. But we could we couldn't tell that that was the. You could see their little feet, yeah. but we couldn't see. You know, actually, that it was the skunks. And you kept calling them squirrels. Yeah. They well, would have been insulted. Well, like really, they can understand what I'm saying. Sure. <laughs> Well, Uncle Charles said the only time that they skunked anybody, put off their odors, was with some little, a bunch of little boys climbed the fence and tried to go over and play with them, and they skunked them real good. Oh, wow. Uh, Uncle Charles said he was glad he wasn't in that group that was waiting to be, to do the pictures. <laughs> He was glad he missed that entertainment. Yeah. I remember that time Louie got sprayed by a skunk. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Nobody wanted to be around him <coughs> at all. And that was just before we found out about tomato juice. Yeah. <coughs> Nobody wanted to be around him. <laughs> oh, he was so brokenhearted. He thought he had found a big pig. A and pig? it was... Uh, a mama bear and her cubs. But Louis thought he found <laughs> a pig. And he was so proud he'd found a pig. He'd found a wild pig. <coughs> <coughs> and Tom, being a mountain man, he knew what it was. He knew it wasn't a <coughs> pig. And he started saying, Louie, get back up here. That's a that's a mama bear and a baby bear. Did you get down there between the bears, the mama bear and those baby bears? And that baby, that mama bear will tear you up. Yeah. He said, she'll kill you. He'll, she'll tear you up to pieces. But nothing happened. He, by being a small child, he was just lucky. He, what are you talking about? No, Louis was an adult when he got sprayed by that skunk. Sprayed by the skunk, yeah. But I'm not talking about the skunk. I'm talking about when he thought he'd found the bears. Yeah, bear. okay. Yeah, he found. I thought the you bear. was. I thought you was confusing no, two no. together. Okay. He had found a mama bear and a baby bear. And Cause he you thought get, he found a pig. Yeah, you get confused and. I was afraid you you had gotten that confused. So. If anything sidetracks me, and you know, I go way off. You do, so. Uh, I just want to make sure you're on the same page as me. <sighs> oh, I hope and I do these quilts justice, you know what? These quilts that I'm going to be making. Yeah. The community quilts. Honey, every one of them you've done have been works of art. you put a lot of work in them. Oh, I love doing this. This is... I can't wait until Linda opens that box. 
I told Daryl, I said, go ahead and let her open the box, but don't let her pull the stuff out until she calls. We can't see her, but we can hear her if, if she is on the phone. Yeah. I said, she seldom ever gets to see anybody see their quilt for the first time. She got to see Carolyn and see hers. No, I didn't. You didn't? Mm -mm. Oh, I, nope. she... I did not. All right. Well, she said she put, you a, 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 put a check in the mail. Forty dollars of it is for the quilt. Oh, I'm not. I'm really. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, we could, we could use the money. Yeah. For one hundred percent sure. Well, I told her. I, 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 uh, she she said that she wanted to pay for it. I said, Carol, if you want to pay for it and you can afford it, that'd be fine. I said, she'll just use the money to buy more quilting material. And give somebody else a treat. Not right now. I believe I'd buy some groceries. Yeah. <laughs> I think this, this month we'll go to the grocery store before we go anywhere else. Let's see. I'll just say, I usually just say, okay, what what do we need to pay this month? And Ricky tells me, and I said, no, okay, you got the card. You go take care of that. It's been a couple times that I've said, let's go to the grocery store. And we eventually make it to the grocery store, but not the first thing. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to go spend about seven, $800 at the grocery store buying groceries that we everybody eats. Y'all keep buying things special for me because I don't eat the things you do. Well, Mom, I want to make sure you have... I know you do, but still. I mean, I'd rather go. I would go hungry. It makes me feel bad, though. That no, I don't want you to feel bad. I do not. I don't go hungry. Really, I don't. I would go hungry just to make sure you have. Yes, I know now, you that's, would. That's why I don't want you to go hungry. But, folks, I'm one of those weird, weird people. I am allergic to chicken. I eat chicken, and it puts me the permanent slave. Like most people, like some people are with mushrooms, I am with chicken. I was at my brother and his wife's one day, and she was making chicken, and it smelled so good. I said, Linda, I don't want a whole piece of chicken. I just like y'all take a chunk of your chicken and give it to me and let me try it and see. Because I haven't eaten it, and I know I used to eat chicken when I was little. But for some reason, I don't eat it anymore, and I don't know why. And she said, no, I'm going to give you a whole piece of chicken. And if you don't eat but one bite off of it, that's all right. The dogs will enjoy it. Well, if you're sure. So I took the chicken. I took one bite off of it. And next thing you know, I have splotches on my face, and I'm scratching my face and my head and down in my chest. And Daryl said, Sis, let me see that. And he said, No more chicken for you. So chicken does you like it does a lot of people with mu uh, mushrooms. You eat that, you liable to die, huh? <coughs> so the next time I went to the doctor, now I told him how I'd done. And he said, Well, your brother's right. He said, You don't eat chicken. That was an allergy breaking out on you. And you very might have, well have died on. And that would not have been fun. And you would not have enjoyed the chicken anyway. I said, well, it had a beautiful taste to it. I think these are turned out nice. Okay, now then, most of this has this dark blue. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about it, Mom. I'll separate them. Just go ahead and do just them. iron all of it, and I'll separate them. Okay. 
Yeah. You're doing a wonderful job just ironing them. Oh, good. And make this right here go a whole lot quicker. Yeah. Oh, I think I just screwed that one up. I sure did. That's a throwaway. <laughs> Keeping my diet to beef, white turkey, in other words, turkey breast, or turkey bacon, and vegetables. And I'm a concentrating, cutting, cutting, cutting. I'll have this one right here ready to put on the first video up in a minute. Just sitting here talking. Mother had mm, eight sisters. Wow. Mm -hmm. And two brothers. Mm. And Green Mac had one set of twins and one set of twiplets. Oh my gosh. Now the twins were not identical twins. The one, he was just mean. Uh -oh. But I found out when I was in my 40s what made him mean. He was, he was really an intelligent person. He was in on inventing the television, first off. He, he invented a tube that they couldn't figure out why it wouldn't work the way they had it invented. But he he took what they had and he took it apart and redid it and made it work. And therefore they was able to send pictures over the airwaves. We had the first television in Atlanta. It was a little nine inch circle and if you saw the radios of the 30s and 40s, it looked like a piece of furniture. And that's the way the TV looked. Just a big, humped up piece of furniture with a round circle in, in it for the uh, TV. It's about nine inches across. But we were... The children of the neighborhood, because everybody wanted to watch TV at our house. And Granny would let them come in. They'd gather on the front porch until time for the cartoon pictures and the, uh, the clown show to come on. Woody, uh, not Woody Woodpecker, um... Woody Willow and Officer Don and Clara Bell the Clam, which was the what they sort of copied uh, McDonald's Clam from, and that was created by. Clara Bell the Clam. There's a lot of people scared of that clown. 
Yeah. The McDonald's clown. Uh huh. They're scared. Yeah. They have. They st They put uh, the clown out on benches at all of the McDonald's. And some people would just just got a good big kick out of scaring people out of it. You think that's just a plastic clown, but it's not. It's a lie. And according to how the sun was shining on it, and his eyes would move. It didn't really, but it would make it look like it was. Well, it'd work if I quit moving it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of... Of the one that played Clarabelle Clown, and then he he started wearing uh, coveralls. And can you remember? <laughs> no, no, no. That was before my time. No, it was right in your time. No, nope. you watched it all the time. Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> he was, was the only one I could think of. Captain Kangaroo was the one that created. Clarabelle clown that McDonald's clown was cra crafted after. Let's see what we got here. Those four. One more. Get that corner there. <sighs> ah! I moved it. Ain't it gonna work if I keep moving it? Well, then don't move it. Well, kind of can't help it. <coughs> well, almost got them all done. Well, that'll be good. And you've been working on it for about 25 minutes now. Oh, good. And everybody gets to hear you. Let's see how many I got up there now. Well, it's my Stop. uncles. Now my uncle Charles, he was just a he was a he was not my birth uncle. Somebody asked me when I was in my fifties, said, Pat, are all of these your birth uncles or and, and, and your birth aunts, or are some of them your uncles by marriage? I said, well, uh, Mother said, honey, don't you remember which ones are your birth uncles? I said, well, yeah, I know, but I have to stop and separate them. I said, I, I said they're all grouped together, and I have to separate them before I can uh, tell who's who. She said, okay. I'll make it real simple for you. Who is it you don't like? Arthur and Oliver. I answered real quick. She said, those you're stuck with. The rest <laughs> of them were chosen into the family by the wife, by your aunts. I said, that does make it simpler. I said, I'll not, I'll not have to separate them anymore. And it was the truth. The two that I did not like were my two uncles by birth. <laughs> well, the one, <laughs> neither one of them were good to their their children. My uncle Oliver, he had two girls and a boy, and my uncle Arthur only had one son, and he just taught him to be mean. He said, I told him one time, he said. If you want to go out there and swing on that tree and somebody else is on it, tell them to get off of it. You're going to swing. And they better get off because if they don't, you'll get up there and swing with them and you'll knock them off. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, why would he do that for? Because he wanted his son to be the cock of the walk. And he, 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 
He thought he was, but he wasn't. That's, that's, he, he could, uh, he'd go out there, we'd be playing, and he'd want to change what we were playing to something else. And nobody wanted to play with him because he wasn't any fun to play with. He was bossy and cruel. Sounds like a horrible person. <laughs> he was. Uh. And he was killed in Texas. He was about... He was about 26, 28, something like that. He got killed in Texas. And his daddy was crying, carrying on. I said, well, Arthur, uh, Arthur, what do you think happened to him? He said, oh, he just started to fight with somebody that was a little bit bigger than he was. I said, well, there you go. That's what happened to him. And why do you suppose he did that? Well, Tommy always thought he was bigger than he was. I said, why was that? He said, because I taught him if, if you act bigger than you are, nobody's going to try to step on you. I said, that ain't so necessarily so. Mm. They think if, you're gonna, if, you, if you think you're that big, let's see what you can do. And he couldn't do, so he got it. I said, your son would still be alive if you hadn't taught him to be that kind of person. Because he, he didn't have that. <sighs> Boy, he was so mad. And Arthur was the smaller of the two twins. Granny said it was because that she had two baskets when they were born. And she put Oliver in the big basket because he was the bigger baby. And she put Arthur in the small basket because he was the smaller baby. Wow, I thought I had cut out enough of these. They were pretty good stacked there, but they ain't. I gotta cut out more of these. Uh, 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 uh. Well, you got time. I've still got a few more of these to iron. Oh, uh, you go for it. Don't matter whether you're done with those or not. I know I need to start moving things around so I can get me something to work with here. I know I'm not going to use these. But they're cut out. If they were many more of these, I wouldn't make it. Well, Mom, if you don't want to feel like doing them, don't do them. Oh, I'm enjoying getting them done. Okay, as long as you are enjoying it. Um, I've want, always been a good ironer. But you don't have to. Well, yeah, saying. if I didn't want to, I wouldn't have come and started it. Okay. I know I'm not uh, obliged to do anything. You ain't got to do it if you don't want to. All I got to do is breathe until I die. quit breathing and then I'm dead. Uh, and God's in control of that. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. Right. Oh, nope, 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 nope. I'm going to start off with that one. Yeah, I thought I had plenty of them, but unfortunately, until I didn't. You know, it's it's <coughs> such a comfort when you know that the person that you love and, and they're dying, that they are ready to go to be with God. Oh, yeah. It's 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 it is a comfort, and I, and when the doctor told me that my mother would be gone within 24 hours, I said, "Well, I'm going to go prepare myself." Then he said, "Honey, you can't do anything to prepare yourself." I said, "Yes, you can." I said, "If you believe in God, and 
you're turning it over to him. You're preparing yourself. And I said, Mother is ready to go be with God. She talks about her this being her trip. She calls it a trip. And I said, my daughter, I said, she's been, she's been cremated. And I said, my daughter and I went in to find what would be the perfect thing to put the remains in. And I said, we went a lot of different stores. And finally, in Walmart, she came and she said, Mom, I found the perfect thing. What did Granny say when she said she was going home? She said she was going to take a trip home, be with God, be with her father. She's always referred to that as a, her trip. And she said, I found the perfect thing. And she and you had you found a little a small suitcase. Where you going? You done? All right, she is done. Did all of them? Thank you, Mom. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. See, me and Mom's putting in on the community quilt. Alrighty, we will see you later. This is how to donate to my PayPal. You come down here to Poor Man's Sewing, and you mash on Poor Man's Sewing. Then you go over here to About. You mash on About, and right here is to donate to Poor Man's Sewing. Thank you. I appreciate everything that is donated. It will go to the sewing shed that we are working on. Or anything that you want me to put it on there, just leave a note on there and I will see what it says. And I really do appreciate you donating and watching my channel. A lot of hugs and kisses to you.